collisions, and conservation of momentum. We've already learned a little bit about conservation of momentum. We've learned that if we take the sum of the momenta initially in our system before any interaction, and then we take the sum of the momenta after the interaction, that uh, they should be equal. And we don't have to know really anything about what happened during the interaction. Well, we want to look at conservation momentum with some specific examples now with collisions. Uh, but before we get to the different examples of collisions, we need to know a little bit about the different types of collisions. In our previous video, we saw a little bit about conservation momentum and explosions. Now we want to take a look at a different kind of interaction where objects are apart and then they come together and interact in something called a collision. Well, there are three types of collisions that we typically talk about. At one end of the spectrum, we have elastic collisions, and those are collisions where objects bounce off each other and kinetic energy is conserved. And a good example of that is a Newton's cradle, where uh, if we have a ball that comes down to one end and hits, then momentum is transferred to the other ball and it comes up and then it comes down and hits, and these just keep going back and forth and back and forth. They keep bouncing off of each other. So that's an example of pretty elastic collisions. Our next type of collision to talk about are inelastic collisions. And this is, these are collisions where objects absorb some of the kinetic energy internally during the collision. For example, in car crashes, the kinetic energy of one car and the kinetic energy of the other car coming together and smash, the cars scrunch and vibrate, and there's a lot of uh, that kinetic energy of the cars that is now turned into lots of vibrations within the cars. So those are called inelastic collisions. Then there is a, another type of collision specifically called completely inelastic collisions. And basically they are inelastic collisions where they're absorbing kinetic energy, but they also are a case where things stick together after the uh, collision. So two things here, two football players coming together and a big tackle, boom, and they stick together and continue as one object after the collision, then that's called a completely inelastic collision. So in our examples, we're first of all going to be taking a look at elastic collisions, and then we'll be taking a look at completely inelastic collisions. And uh, in inelastic collisions are kind of uh, span the spectrum between these two uh, endpoints. Let's copy this down for notes first, though. Now for our first type of collision, and that is an elastic collision. And remember, elastic collisions where objects conserve kinetic energy and they bounce off each other. So to start with, with in our inelastic collision, we're going to start with conservation momentum. The sum of the momentum before the collision should be equal to the sum of the momentum after the collision. So in our elastic collision here, our before case, our cart two is going to be at rest. It's not going to be moving, so its initial momentum is going to be zero. But we have cart one that's going to come in and collide with cart two, so cart two is going to be coming in at two meters per second. So since they both have a mass of one kilogram, uh, our initial momentum for cart one is one times two, mass times velocity, one kilogram times two meters per second. So the initial momentum is two kilograms meters per second for cart one. And again, this one is zero. So when we add those together, two plus zero is two kilograms meters per second of momentum totally in the system beforehand. Now, of course, we have our interaction, Newton's third law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. There's an impulse between the carts, and they both experiencing experience the same impulse but in an opposite sense. So the impulse acts to slow down and stop cart one, where the impulse acts on cart two uh, to increase its speed from zero to some speed of two meters per second and give it momentum. So basically we're transferring momentum since they have equal mass in this case, we'll have a clean transfer of momentum during that elastic collision between cart one and cart two. So cart one gave all of its momentum to cart two here. It comes to rest. Cart one comes to rest. Cart two uh, gets moving now with two meters per second. 
And so the momentum after the interaction, we have no momentum for cart one because there's no velocity, but cart two is one kilogram times two meters per second. And therefore our total momentum is two kilograms meters per second after the interaction. So the sum of the momentum after is equal to the sum of the momentum before. And that's true for any kind of interaction. This is an elastic collision. We're going to take a look at that in our simulation in just a second after you copy these notes. All right, so let's take a look at our elastic collision here uh, of our two carts. And we're going to have cart one coming in at two meters per second, and it has a mass of one kilogram. So its initial momentum is two times one is two. Cart two is initially at rest, it's just sitting there, so it has no momentum, so our total initial momentum of our system is two kilograms meters per second. Let's see what happens after. And boom, afterward, cart one stopped and transferred all of its momentum to cart two. So our final momentum is zero times one is zero, plus two times one is two. So two plus zero is two afterwards also. And conservation momentum works for our elastic collisions. Let's take another example. It's maybe a little more interesting here. Let's reset. And then I'm gonna make cart one three times more massive than cart two and see what happens. Oh wait, beforehand, our initial momentum is two times three is six now. Since this is three times more massive, our total momentum is the, the product of mass times velocity. So that's six and this one's zero, so the total is six. And then, boom, afterwards, whoa, look at that. Cart one didn't stop, it kept going because the mass of this wasn't, the inertia of this wasn't enough to stop that. So afterwards, let's take a look at our momentum. We have one times three from this cart, three kilograms times one meters per second. So we have three kilograms meters per second. And then from this one, we have three times one is three also. So three plus three is six. And guess what? That's what we had to begin with. And so conservation moment, momentum work, six is equal to six. One last little look here. We're going to reset and we're gonna make the mass of cart one, uh, one kilogram and make the mass of cart two, three kilograms. And let's see what happens here. And dun, dun, dun. Whoop. our initial momentum is only two kilograms meters per second. Two times one is two plus zero. Let's see what happens after. Boom. Wow, okay, that one actually went backward. So let's take a look at this. Our final momentum, negative one meter per second times one. So this is a, has a momentum of negative one kilograms meters per second. Afterwards, this one has one times three is three kilograms meters per second going to the right. So three plus a negative one is two kilograms meters per second. And that's what it was to begin with. Conservation momentum works. And for our other case, our completely inelastic collision, we're going to have the same initial state that we did before where cart one is coming in to hit cart two and cart two is at rest and therefore its initial momentum is equal to zero. Cart one's initial momentum is going to be its mass, one kilogram, times its velocity of two meters per second coming in to hit, and therefore, our, again, our initial momentum is gonna be two kilograms meters per second. And again, we have a collision, we have uh, Newton's third law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And this time, though, the uh, during is going to cause cart one to slow down but not stop and it's going to cause cart one to speed up but not quite to the two meters per second that it did previously. Now what happens is during the collision the two carts stick together in this inelastic collision. There's some vibration and uh, some kinetic energy absorbed into molecular kinetic energy in the carts here, internal energy. And uh, the carts now continue together, stuck together at one off at a speed of one meter per second. And uh, so they keep cruising, but overall not as fast as cart one was going before. And again, they're stuck together. So when they're stuck together, when we look at our sum of momenta uh, after the collision here, 
we can see that both of the masses are stuck together. So our total momentum after the collision is going to be equal to mass 1 plus, plus mass 2 since they're combined into one object. And then just one final velocity since they're stuck together. They move together at this speed. So here's our momentum afterwards. So 1 kilogram plus 1 kilogram is 2 kilograms times a speed of one meter per second and therefore our final momentum is two kilograms meters per second just like it was to begin with. So take these down as notes and then we'll see this in the simulation. So let's check out our completely inelastic collision. Again cart one like it was before is has a mass of one kilogram and it's going to be cruising at two meters per second. Then it's going to hit cart two again at rest, so no momentum contributed to it at the beginning. But now they're, it's an inelastic collision, so they're going to stick together. Let's see what happens. And boom. Notice that they're stuck together, and they're both cruising at the same speed of one meter per second. And so that should make sense because our initial momentum was one times two or two kilograms meters per second. Now we have them both stuck together. So we have one mass, which is equal to one kilogram plus one kilogram or two kilograms times a velocity of one meter per second. And again, two kilograms meters per second is equal to what it was initially. And those are inelastic or completely inelastic collisions. And Scratch's parting thought. And good luck on your quest for continuous improvement.